Okay. That's recording, hopefully. So I'm just going to share the screen a little bit bigger. OK, so group seven review questions then. Where we go. First question, uh, obviously about group seven. OK, it's chlorine, sodium chloride and sodium bromide. And it's talking about sodium bromide here with concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, so it's a little bit of a clue there about what type of reaction we're talking about. We're talking about the solid uh, halide reactions in the test tube. You might watch a video on it uh, or uh, and adding concentrated sulfuric down and thinking about the reactions that are going on. So write an equation for sodium bromide. So we're starting with sodium bromide. Uh, and explain why bromide ions react differently. OK, so sodium bromide and we're adding our concentrated sulfuric acid. We need to remember that there are both the acid base reaction going on and the redox reactions. And in terms of the redox reactions, remember that the bromide ion can reduce the sulfuric acid down to SO2, therefore itself goes to Br2. OK, so we'll end up with the normal salt, Na2SO4, plus your SO2, plus Br2, plus water. We then just need to make sure we can balance that. Uh, so we've got Na2, so we need two bromides there. We've got H2, so we need, uh, we've got two waters. Uh, so we, yeah, I think that's okay, actually. All right, do we need anything else? Do you think so? No, that's fine. Oh no, we've got two S's, big pardon. We've got two S's, so we'll need two there. That's right, isn't it? So we'll need a two down there. Yeah, two S's there, okay. Uh, then it says, right, bromide ions, why are the re bromide ions react differently to the chloride ions? And it's remembering that the chloride ions at the top of the group aren't able to do uh, this uh, reaction with the sulfuric acid. We're able to do the acid base one, but not the uh, redox reactions. Why is that? It's because the bromide ion, and again, are larger. And the Cl minus. And therefore, in terms of bromide ions, they're more easily oxidized. Okay. So banging outside, which is great. They're just doing some work outside as well. OK, so that's those marks there. We should get uh, one for the equation and then one for each of those points there. Next part of the question. So this is a six mark question. Uh, so this might be a level of response question where you have to sort of uh, make sure that you think about each stage that they want you to answer. Um, so let's have a look at this question. Colour solution containing a mixture this time of sodium chloride and sodium bromide using aqueous silver nitrate. So you should be thinking, what's that going to do? And remembering that with silver nitrates, a test of these halide ions. With your chloride, you'll form a white precipitate. With your bromide, you'll form a cream precipitate. Uh, and then it says it wants to produce a pure sample of the so sodium, uh, sorry, sodium silver bromide. Okay. Explain the steps and importantly, write equations for the reactions that are going on. Okay. So I'm going to take my um, solution, my mixture of my sodium chloride and bromide. Okay. So that's my solution mixture. And the first thing I will do as well will add my silver nitrate. That's expecting then to form the two precipitates. So I will form my silver chloride at, oh, and my silver bromide precipitates. 
So I need to write equations for those, okay? So these are the bits you need to make sure you pick out all the relevant bits of the question. So the first one will be my silver nitrate plus my silver chloride. Oh, sorry, so bleh, sodium chloride, big pardon. Look. Let's just get rid of a rock. Salt, silver, sodium, there we go. Sodium chloride forming the silver chloride uh, precipitate. Okay, and the other one would form the silver bromide. So similarly, silver nitrate, this time was the bromide. Give my silver bromide, that would be my cream precipitate. So I've made my two precipitates, I now need to dissolve one, okay, because I only want the pure sample of my silver bromide, so I need to dissolve the chloride. So the silver chloride will dissolve in dilute ammonia. Okay, that will then uh, um, dissolve the chloride. And we need to write an equation for that. A colour pen change. So you're taking your silver chloride plus ammonia, and that forms your silver ammonium complex. And we'll do more about complexes. Uh, when we look at transition metals. So that's one of them dissolved. So the other one will still be there. The silver bromide will still be there. So I just need to filter that off, wash it and dry that. That will still be the solid. And then I'm just going to wash it to remove uh, any insoluble things at that point and dry to remove the water. Okay, that's our six marks there. Do you remember the equations? Remember to pick out everything in the question. Make sure I've got all those marks. The last part then. Write an ionic equation, so bearing in mind ionic this time, for the reaction between chlorine and cold uh, sodium hydroxide solution, and then give the oxidation states. So let's think about the reaction first. We're taking our chlorine, so I'm not writing the ionic, I'm just writing what's actually going on to start with, plus our sodium hydroxide. And we need to remember that that will make the NaCl plus the chlorate plus water. Let's make sure that's balanced. We've got two sodiums on the right, so we'll have to have two on the left here. I think everything else looks okay. We've got chlorines, oxygen. Yep. Uh, therefore, then we can write our ions and make sure that we can cross out our spectator ions. So we leave chlorine alone, that's not ionic. We've got two Na pluses, plus two OH minuses. We've got an Na plus there, Cl minus. We've got an Na plus, a ClO minus. And water, covalent, we leave it alone. We then need to cross out spectator ions. We've got two Na's on the left. And we've got one, two on the right, so I'm just what not put those together. Uh, anything else? No? Oh, that's fine now. So in terms of the ionic, we'll have Cl2 plus 2OH minus going to Cl minus plus ClO minus plus H2O. Okay, so that's our ionic equation. Give the oxidation state then, so we've got the oxidation state, the chlorine and of the chlorine containing ions formed. 
So oxidation states. Any element starts at zero, so chlorine's there. And then again, it takes the charge here, so minus one. It's already a negative, it would be minus two for the oxygen, therefore to cancel that out and still leave a net one negative behind, the chlorine there needs to be plus one. Okay, so there's our oxidation states for the species. Right then, next question. Question two, again, six marker. So again, possibly some sort of level of response and you think about how you set them out and make sure that you cover everything that you need. We've got bromine this time. We've got strontium chloride. And we'll get a different colour pen. And we've got iodine monochloride. Okay, I like similar MR values. Suggest reasons uh, and the order of melting points for, with reasons, the order of melting points for these three substances. So whenever they're thinking about melting points, we need to be thinking structure bonding, okay? Any sort of thing that mentions melting points, structure bonding should come immediately to mind. So just on the actual question itself, we need to think about structure bonding within bromine. So bromine is a simple molecular. I'm just going to add these bits up here and that'll help me with my answer for my question and how I'm going to lay it out. And then within bromine, because it's simple molecular, the bonds that you're going to break are the ones between the molecules. OK, so we're going to be looking at the ones between. Bromine has got no dipole, etc. So it's only got van der Waals. So I'm going to be talking about van der Waal forces. Okay, and I'll just put VW there just to uh, recognise that. So I'm just helping myself structure the question. Strontium chloride, metal, non-metal as ionic as they can be. So there I'm going to be talking about giant ionic lattices and ionic bonding, ionic bonding being particularly strong. So that might give us a hint about the uh, melting points. And then iodine monochloride. Okay, again, simple molecular. Okay, two non-metal as so simple molecular, this time however, I've got iodine and chlorine, they're not the same, they'll have a difference in electronegativities, so you'll be looking at between the molecules, having dipole-dipole interactions between the molecules. Okay, so that's just to help me structure things. And then I just need to talk about them all and decide at the end what uh, I'm going to do in terms of the uh, uh, melting points. So let's start with strontium chloride. Okay, and I said already it's ionic, so it's got a giant ionic lattice. Okay, with so because it is in a lattice, many, yeah, there's lots of them to break, and they're strong ionic bonds. Okay. So all those there that we needed. Uh, so to break. So looking at those, they're going to be much higher in general, I would assume, than the simple molecular, the weaker van der Waals, the, the etc. Okay. So highest melting point when I get to putting my little values down the bottom. Highest melting point. Give it a little bit. Then we'll go to ICL. We've already said it's simple molecular. With dipole-dipole interactions. And always important when you're talking about intermolecular forces, especially in six mark questions, that somewhere when you're talking about them relevant, you put between the molecules. Because normally that appears on the mark scheme as something that you always need to write. Okay. So those are going to be weaker. Weaker 
than ionic, so we would expect lower melting points. And the last one then, the Br2, we said was simple molecular. With Van der Waal forces. And just for good measure, we will again put between the molecules. Again, much weaker then, we'd expect them to be weaker than the ionic, uh, the, sorry, the ionic, and definitely a little bit weaker as well than the dipole dipole. So we explained, we just need to summarize at the bottom. Therefore, we would think that the melting points or the strontium chloride would be the highest. And then we'd have the ICL one with the band with the dipole dipoles, and then we'd have the bromine. Okay. Question three. Uh, question three then. Run right equation for the reaction of chlorine and cold water. Let's do that first. Chlorine plus water. Remember there's an equilibrium here. Makes your HCl plus your HClO. Uh, state a reason why chlorine is added to drinking water. That's your uh, hypochlorate and acting, acting sort of as a, a, a disinfectant so it kills bacteria. And then suggest a disadvantage of treating water in this way. There's quite a few you can have. Some people are quite sort of allergic a little bit to the chlorine. It doesn't particularly taste nice, so either of those. There are others as well. Question four. This question is about iodine and its compounds. Uh, complete the electron configuration of an iodine atom. And they started here with the noble gas of krypton. So they're expecting a short answer form. So remember, you look to the last the row of the periodic table what um, noble gas it is, and indeed it would be krypton, which is just above iodine, and then you carry on from there on. Also remembering as well that you put all the fours together, the fives together, etc. So we'd carry on and we think, oh yes, it's 5s2, 4d10, etc. But I'm going to write the 4d's first because I keep all those together. So we'll write 4d10, 5s2, which would actually fill first, and then your 5 P, and where have we got to with iodine? We got to five. Okay. Then they've shown you the structure of iodine. So obviously, iodine's a diatomic molecule, I2, and then they've put like them in a structure. Use your knowledge of structure and bonding. So again, yeah, structure and bonding to explain the melting points. And then we're talking about melting boiling points, so structure bonding. And it's giving you some values this time. So it says iodine is 113.5 and hydrogen iodide is very low at minus 50.8 okay so just as it says structure bonding we'll talk about the structure first uh, structure of iodine is simple molecular HI as well, it's also a simple molecular. And it's okay to sort of bullet point a little bit, as long as you do write reasonable as well. 
simple molecular for these sort of six mark questions. All right. Bonding then, because it asks about bonding. Both of those will be held by intermolecular forces, okay? Because they're simple molecular, that's the forces we're going to talk about when we're talking about melting these things, okay? So both are held together by intermolecular forces. Hold up a bit. Which are weak in general, yeah? So they both have low melting points in general, yeah? They're not up in the thousands or hundreds even. Oh, one just about is. Okay. However, iodine. is larger than hydrogen iodide. So iodine has more electrons. You've got more electrons, you've got stronger van der Waals. Has more electrons. Between the molecules again, although you have said they're intermolecular uh, molecules. So I2 higher melting point. And you might be thinking, well, ooh, well uh, iodine, yes, that's van der Waals, but hydrogen iodide has also got some dipole dipole. Now, if they've given in the question, yeah, that the one that you only know has got iodine, has got uh, van der Waals, and it is higher than the other one, then the van der Waals forces must outweigh anything else you've got in there, okay? So you're right, okay? The HI does have dipole dipole uh, forces the molecules okay well the van der Waals must dominate so I'll just put that in brackets there just to remind you so here that's not always the case, it's just here, that's what information they've given you. So you have to go with that really in terms of describing those melting points. Okay, that's question four. Oops. Question, oh, still, yeah, we're still going on question four. State why iodine does not conduct electricity. Uh, remember to, in order to conduct electricity, you would need mobile, because they need to be free to move, ions. Is there any ions in anything that's simple molecular? No, there's not. And also, you could need some mobile electrons, whether they're delocalized or whatever. Uh, mobile, not molecule, Tracy. Mobile electrons. No, it doesn't have those either. Okay. So it has no, anything that's free to move, so what do you delocalize electrons? Or ions, oh, ions. So it can't conduct electricity. To do an equation, for the formation of hydrogen iodide from its elements, should be okay. So we're making hydrogen iodide from its elements, so we need a H and an I. Remembering that hydrogen is diatomic, so we'll need half one of those, and half one of the I2s as well, because they're diatomic. Really straightforward that bit. Question five, my 
few test tube reactions on some of the group seven bits. Following pairs can be distinguished by observing what happens in test tubes. So we are looking at test tube reactions. Give a suitable aqueous reagent that could be added separately to each compound and describe what you would observe in each case. So sodium fluoride and a chloride. We had this earlier, I think, in just literally the long mark question at the front. A fluoride and a chloride, you're looking at um, your halide ions. Testing for halide ions, we'll be losing, losing, using silver nitrate. With the chloride, we've already said that we'll form a white precipitate. So I'll put that down there. To make sure you write the word precipitate. With the fluoride, it will form your AGF, but it's remembering with the fluoride, the AGF is soluble. So you will see no change. So it's not the reaction doesn't work or doesn't happen. It does happen, but the silver fluoride that you make isn't a solid, isn't a precipitate, it's soluble. So you will see no change. Okay, question six. Halogens, electronegativities this time of the halogens are shown. So as you can sort of see as we go down the group this way, yeah, and the electronegativity decreases. And as we describe virtually everything as we go down the group, what do we see? So as we go down the group, more shells, more shielding. Weaker attraction. Uh, of the nucleus. And remember when it's talking about electronegativity, it's to that shared pair of electrons in a covalent bond. Unlike when we're talking about ionization energies or anything like that. Okay, so with electronegativity, you're talking about the power of an atom to pull those electrons towards itself in a covalent bond. So the weaker the attraction of the nucleus to the shared pair, in covalent bond. Uh, next bit. Halogens for behave as oxidizing agents, explaining in terms of electron transfer. So what's happening to the electrons? Okay. If it's an oxidizing agent itself is being reduced, reduction is gain. Okay, so if it's acting as an oxidizing agent, it means the thing itself will be reduced. So it gains electrons. Okay, or as an electron acceptor. Then they've given another displacement type reaction at the bottom. Or chlorine gas bubble through your aqueous potassium bromide. Explain with reference to oxidation states. So make sure we write all the oxidation states we need. Uh, why this reaction is a redox. Redox means there's an oxidation and a reduction. So we need to sort of show that with our uh, oxidation states. So the chlorine. Uh, any element starts at zero. So it goes from zero. And then in the case Cl of here, your potassium's in group one, so it's plus one. And then the Cl would have to be minus one. So it goes from zero to minus one. Whereas the bromine, it starts here at minus one, similar to the case Cl on the other side, and it goes to an element, which will be zero. So you've shown that in terms of oxidation states, both oxidation and reduction occur. Next question.
Tracy, I don't think your microphone's working anymore. We can't hear you. Start sorted out the sound. Hopefully, you can see the questions still. Chlorine reacts with water to earn an equilibrium containing HCl and chloric acid. We wrote this one out before, so we've done this one already. Okay. I know, I can't do anything about it. I'm just going to have to count in here. I feel like I'm raised, but I'm not typing in the chat. One second. Uh, okay, so then um, the last little bit here, I was going to finish it. Household bleach contains sodium chloride. State and explain with reference to your equation why it's dangerous to acidify them. If you increase the acid, equilibrium moves left. Produces Cl2, which is toxic. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now uh, and I'm going to see whether we can sort the last little bit out, but hopefully you saw that even if you didn't hear it for a second. You can't, no, I don't think it's that.